thank you all for coming. I'm very excited to talk to you about my work here at Bragg's. So I am a cell biologist. I'm interested in how understanding how cells work. The reason I and some of the other scientists are interested in cells is that we are composed of trillions of different cells, and virtually all human diseases are caused on some level by these cells not working correctly. And as scientists, the ways we can think of to try to treat disease is to first understand what's going on in cells during disease. And to do that, we have to understand what's going on in cells normally. That, however, is a very difficult challenge, because it, as you can see in this basic diagram, cells are very complicated objects. As complicated as they are, we can basically think of them as just a whole bunch of different biochemical reactions, all compartmentalized within a membrane, and then further compartmentalized into these structures called organelles, which you can see in this picture. So we can think of organelles as we like organs. So we are an organism with special structures inside of us called organs, like our heart and lung, which do important functions we need to live. Similarly, a cell has structures inside of it called organelles, which carry out important functions the cell needs to live. And today, I'll be talking about one specific organelle in our research with fat, and it's probably one you haven't heard of, called the peroxisome, which is a major site of fat metabolism in our cells. So having only been discovered about 60 years ago, peroxisomes are one of the last major organelles to be identified, and we typically think of them as just a simple, single membrane sac of proteins. So they compartmentalize different reactions, like the breakdown of fats for energy. We know that compromised peroxisome function causes devastating genetic diseases in humans, and impaired peroxisome function is more generally implicated in things like cancer and aging. However, peroxisomes are still very mysterious organelles today. Even basic questions like how they're formed, and if they're really structured as just a simple single membrane sac, are kind of not clear and have been difficult to study. In the Bartell lab, we actually use a plant with Rabidopsis thaliana, to investigate peroxisomes. And this is just a classical system to investigate plant biology that happens to be a great model to investigate peroxisomes. So it's very easy to manipulate genetically. And we know that peroxisomes in Arabidopsis are controlled by the same genes and proteins as they are in us, such that any findings and discoveries we find about peroxisomes in Arabidopsis are very likely to directly translate to our understanding of human peroxisomes. Additionally, Peroxisomes have this major advantage, where they can, or Arabidopsis has a major advantage, where they can have giant peroxisomes. So whereas peroxisomes in our cells are very tiny, very difficult to look at with microscopy, peroxisomes in Arabidopsis are very easy to visualize under the microscope. And the way we do that specifically is by engineering different um, Arabidopsis lines that make fluorescent proteins. So fluorescent proteins are proteins that when you shine a laser on them, they actually glow a specific color and so what we do is make different um, Arabidopsis lines expressing different fluorescent proteins that are targeted to different parts of the cell, such that if we target, for instance, a green fluorescent protein to the inside of an organelle, we can see these organelles based on the color that they glow. And the way we specifically use this technique to investigate peroxisomes is to actually combine different colors of fluorescent proteins and target them all to different parts of the peroxisome. For instance, if we take a green fluorescent protein and target it to the membrane of the peroxisome, and also a red or pink fluorescent protein and target it to the inside of the peroxisome, we can visualize all these parts of the peroxisome. And we did that expecting to see just simple green sacs of this pink protein, but in actuality, what we saw was quite a bit more complex than that. And rather than just a simple bag of protein, we actually saw that virtually all of the peroxisome is full of these internal membranes. When we watched these over several hours, we saw that the peroxisomes were shrinking down. They continuously packed themselves full of these membranes, such that the end result was an organelle, so densely packed with membranes that we couldn't even resolve individual membranes. And currently, we're working on investigating exactly how these membranes form and what all they're being used for, but we think they have a central role in the way peroxisomes break down fat for energy. The reason we think that is because, whereas in normal peroxisomes, where they have functioning fat metabolism enzymes, they have all these internal membranes. In peroxisomes with compromised fat metabolism, fat metabolism enzymes, they have a major problem bringing in these internal membranes. They're just big and only full of proteins. And what we think is happening is that these internal membranes are actually being used to bring in the fats for the peroxisome to break down for energy. So we're very excited about this. We think this finding probably directly translates to how peroxisomes work in us. And then probably right now in all of us, peroxisomes are bringing in these internal membranes. And we're very
very interested to see how this finding will inform our understanding of paroxysm disorders and their role in human disease. So with that, thank you all for your time. Thank you all for coming out to hear all of our speakers talk about some of the really exciting work we have going on in the School of Natural Sciences. Uh, would you all please join me in thanking all of our speakers for their excellent